to see if we should start. Yeah, it's a special. Okay. Great. Well, um, welcome everyone. Thank you very much for connecting to our first start to the um, to our panel and um, institutional discussing institutional othering. Um, and so we've got the pleasure to welcome Camilla Permitiu, um, uh, from who's an associate professor from the Department of Cultural Anthropology and Communication Studies at the Faculty of um, Journalism and Communication Studies at the University of Bucharest, and who did a postdoctoral research at the Romanian Academy in Yash, and who's interested in organizational and political communication, semiotics, and advertising. So we're looking Good forward morning. to your Thank you. talk. Good morning, everybody. Um, so as you said, my postdoctoral research was on um, the Academy of uh, Yash, and uh, the topic uh, at that time was uh, an analysis of European years. I don't know whether you are familiar with European years. So each year the European Commission chooses a year. For example, last year and two years ago, um, these two years were for European year of citizenship. And for these two years, actually, we have, uh, we still have a platform where citizens can express their opinions on certain issues. So for today, I, I chose this uh, uh, problem or this issue of Roma community on this platform, how it was debated on uh, this uh, on your, uh, debating your platform. So I think that everybody is aware of uh, the problem of uh, the Roma community. In some countries, it is a sensitive issue. In, uh, in other countries, no, it depends. And uh, actually, this, I, I chose this, uh, this issue of our community because as it is on, uh, written on uh, this platform, they mainly live in Romania. So it is actually something personal, let us say, because we are deeply involved in this, in this problem. Uh, here, now you have the studies that uh, were uh, on the Roma community. Actually, uh, several years ago, I uh, I analyzed some uh, NGOs campaigns, discourses on Roma inclusion, whether they were successful or not. But today, so as I said, this study will focus on another type of, uh, of discourse, namely uh, on uh, the discourse of EU citizens as consumers of EU issues. So the debate in Europe platform, as I said, um, it is focused on three principles, inclusiveness, diversity, and citizen participation. And that was actually an issue that I wanted to see. If indeed we have citizen participation, and how this citizen participation actually is uh, uh, achieved through this platform. So the platform was launched in uh, 2011, and as um, uh, we may say that it is the future growth-based participatory democracy, and let us see if this is the case. So, uh, for today, I chose um, uh, the issue, how can you end poverty and exclusion in the Roma community? This debate was launched last year, and as you can see, uh, it provided 185 comments. Uh, so, the idea of this study was to see, to have an insight into the network of communication, to see the degree in which the platform is a two-way communication, as they claim that they are, and uh, then the qualitative analysis to see the discursive categories of legitimation and delegitimation used in the online representation of the Roma, of the Roma community. Uh, here are some theoretical background about legitimation, and uh, actually I started from uh, Van Dyke's definition that we have legitimation as the institutional counterpart of justification, but for this platform actually we do not have a top-down manner, but we have a bottom-up delegitimation or legitimation. So because EU citizens through this platform are considered power holders through the online content that they, they generated. Um, seeing the visibility and interaction of the online European participant, uh, so there were 75 participants on this particular issue. So I tried to see this network, how it worked. 
So I call it with three knowledge estimators and with less than 10 <coughs> This other category that I called it was a number of comments, seed threads, and two-way communication. So this is a bit of a network. And now what the findings. The idea is that, as you can see, um, more than half of the comment of, of sorry of participants actually provided only one comment. So automatically we do not have this two-way communication too much on this at least on this particular issue. Um, there were 32 seed threads. Okay, and the uh, greatest number of three seed threads were provided by um, even if some of them declared their nationality. We can see through their names, Boris Valkov, it is a Bulgarian name, uh, Anna Georgieva, either Russian or Bulgarian, it depends, Romanian from Norway. And we have this, this uh, lady, Ruth Burnett, was actually um, the most proliferant commentator on this, uh, on this uh, platform. And uh, actually she had uh, 40, uh, 45 comments. So as I said, she was the one actually who uh, entertained and uh, actually captured the attention. Uh, now, in case of, for the two-way communication, unfortunately, there were only eight instances of two-way communication. And here you have the, the instances that uh, uh, this uh, issue actually uh, provided. Um, when it comes to the analysis of, of uh, their discourse and their comments, uh, so I chose this social cognitive approach to ideologies uh, provided by Van Day. So as ideologies embed those elements which provide a group legitimation, identification, and cohesion. Um, and I started from the six categories that Van Day mentioned, mentions the membership and position, Goers' activities and resources, and I try to group them, norms and values. So to see how these are, are uh, legitimized or not. Uh, the, the legitimation of membership on position, I try to, to divide the idea of membership into participant roles. So the micro group, those members of the Roma community, whether they were present or not in this debate, the massive group, Members of the member states categories where Roma community is present, for example, Romanians, and macro group other EU countries like UK, France, Germany, and so on. The position is clear because we may have positive relations or negative relations. In, the, in terms of growers, activities, and resources, I provide uh, this one a bit with uh, what uh, what uh, term, uh, Theo, sorry, Theo Panel says about uh, rationalization and legitimation for rationalizations, namely that you have the goals and uses of uh, social action and the knowledge that society has constructed to endow them with cognitive validity. So to see how this validity is performed through past actions, aims, activities, or means. And in terms of the legitimation of norms and values, I also mentioned Pan level with the moral legitimation, evaluation, and analogy. Now, um, I was curious to see if we introduce uh, all of the comments in the, that software with word clouds, what would be the most um, frequent actually words that pop up? So the idea is that Roma, okay, is the one which is the most frequent one, and then we have EU. And the uh, Sorry, this anti-blue is uh, black. But the idea is that two countries were mentioned there. Romania and Bulgaria were the most salient countries that, uh, that were uh, in, this, uh, in this world cloud. Now, coming back to this idea of membership and position, what, how they legitimated or not this idea of membership. So I, uh, in terms of legitimators of the Roma community, and at the same time the member states government, because there it was, uh, the debate was not only on the Roma community. We had other discourses on othering, othering being in this case the member states government. So we have actually the personal authority, which was the most <coughs> one. And we have um, this interesting idea of uh, 
how Roma citizens were involved. And uh, we have a move, a local strategic move from economic explosiveness in the beginning. And actually, this was one instance with Natalia Dominica, she's here in Romania, Romanian Roma. And actually, in the beginning, she did not include herself in the community. But later on in the debate, okay, she said, I'm Roma from the Republic of Moldova. Uh, actually, and she lives in Romania. So we have this, uh, this move from phenomenal inclusiveness to phenomenal inclusiveness. On the other hand, we have uh, uh, Ruth Burnett, as I told you, the most prolific uh, commentator. And um, she was the one defending the Roma community. And uh, she has also this uh, idea of personal authority just through uh, friendships, because she says that try getting, try getting to know some of the Roma, I mean really becoming friends, and this was her solution. Not to put all the Roma community, Roma people in one category, they are bad. Just try to, to find a specific individual and try to get a friend with him, and then you will have another perspective on the Roma community. <coughs> so this is one type of legitimation. Then we have the authority of tradition here in, um, in legitimating the membership, the Roma community. And indeed, we have this emphasis on their uh, good things. And they mentioned the craftsmanship. This was the most um, salient uh, idea uh, with authority of tradition. Now, it is interesting that this, uh, this debating Europe platform works like this, um, the moderators actually take some uh, some ideas from the citizens and they address the ideas to some members of the parliament. Now, the member of the parliament who, in word of commas, took part in this debate because it was not two-way communication with that uh, that uh, member of the parliament from Bulgaria, he actually um, did not legitimate the Roma community through tradition. He delegitimated the Roma, the Roma community through tradition. He said something like, okay, I respect tradition, but I, will, I say that not all traditions are good traditions. So in a way, he, he accuses, implicitly accuses the Roma community for their tradition. Now, we have another, another type of legitimation, and it is this polarization between, and this is actually, um, a quote, Gionut uh, his name is Romanian, for sure. So we have this polarization between the communist regime and the democratic regime, at least in Romania. So you have, he mentioned this comrade that is known for the communist regime, because they, he said that they gave us, they gave them a house and a job, and whereas in democracy they have this no longer. Now, coming to the legitimators of the Roma community, we have also this personal authority, but uh, this time emphasizing their bad things. And this um, storytelling is very interesting because we have Bulgarians and even Russians say, uh, telling about their experience with, with the Roma community. And through this uh, strategy of storytelling, we have actually a way of assigning responsibility. Um, coming to the delegitimation of national and new organizations, we have uh, this uh, de emphasizing their good things. Uh, and um, why? Because we have this, this term, the, the selection of negative terms, and the term, the, the word which, uh, which came up was that of failure. At the same time, we have this polarization between Eastern countries versus Western countries. And we have this uh, Anna Georgieva, who also had the several uh, seed threats, and she said the West is very worried about the rights of the Roma, take them all. And th that is actually her, her solution, and she goes with this threat that uh, the Westerners are some hypocrites, they do not know actually the problem that is there. Now, in terms of goals, activities, and resources, we have this uh, way of living on the one hand <coughs> and free school and the infants, because that were the, uh, the terms which, which came up. Now, we have this way of living seen either as <coughs> um, 
as legitimating their way of living through difference because after all they kept saying Europe is uh, diversity in unity, unity in diversity. Okay, so let us uh, take them as they are, so difference and resistance to integration and uh, another commentator said that they are nomadic tribes so we have to understand them because they cannot stay in one place. So take them as they are. On the other hand, we have the way of living as intolerance. And again, we have this, as in storytelling, we have this juxtaposition of activities with human trafficking, pickpocketing, and so on. Um, in terms of uh, free schooling and, um, and the funds, we have this idea of uh, social resources. And that was interesting because another strategy was this reversal victim agent polarization. Um, the Roma community, we were, we were supposed that to, to think that the Roma community was discriminating. But those who live, who live for example, Romanians or Bulgarians, they said, no, we are the, 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 are the dominant groups, maybe Romanians or Bulgarians, we are discriminating, not them. So this was one, uh, one strategy of reversal victim agent polarization. Now, another solution was this implicitness of a solution and we have Borislav Valko from Bulgaria um, having this uh, threat, uh, seed threat, to take the children out of their families. Because actually, kids maybe they want to go to school, but their parents do not want to, them to go to school. So this was his solution, and of course this, uh, this debate was, uh, was very heated. Now in terms of funds, um, the local meaning was, uh, was obtained through detailed descriptions of two social, uh, social actions. We have the EU fund failure. And as you can see the name, this was the seed trap, and the names clearly suggest that he is a Westerner. And then we have this phenomenon of solid charity. And uh, the name, I do not know exactly what the name, would, uh, what nationality the name would, would imply. But he, he's, uh, I found his name uh, in other analysis on uh, debating Europe. So he is uh, uh, very uh, involved in this, uh, in this platform. And then we have another type of, um, of strategy here, the polarization between rich and poor. So Good Burnett, the UK uh, commentator, she defends the Roma community, but at the same time actually she blames EU for, uh, for this discrepancy that actually they, they maintain. We are rich and you are poor and you depend on us. So she's against actually uh, EU and the way they, uh, they fund this, uh, this Roma community. In terms of uh, norms and values, we have uh, a juxtaposition of negative evaluative adjectives and this is clear, dirty, messy, beggars and so on. But at the same time, we have this, uh, this strategy of comparison, the Roma community versus Jews. So we have a legitimation function, legitimating function, but at the same time, we have a delegitimating solution. Just not to, as you have here, including white and Jews, and raise them into Nazi families and send them to special Napoli schools to brainwash them. So this was the idea. Do not act as a several years ago happened. So this was another strategy. So as a conclusion, uh, this on this issue of, of uh, Roma community, uh, debating Euro platform did not have a proliferant two-way communication. Maybe some other studies will show that this debate, actually, this uh, platform actually works as a two-way communication. Now, the discursive the legitimation of other, we have one, on the one hand the Roma community, and on the other hand, the member state governments and EU organization. We have clear positive other presentation to reference to historical and cultural context, so oriented towards the past. We have a polarization between former governments and present governments. And on the other hand, for the other presentation, we have this negative uh, expressive uh, intolerance, the typical uh, discursive position, this idea that the discriminated majority versus privileged majority, uh, minority, sorry, and the polarization between rich EU countries versus uh, EU countries. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you very much for this very interesting talk on these uh, discursive strategies. Um, yes, the floor is open for questions, comments. Yes, please. Is there um, however a balance between the negative uh, presentation and let's say negative other presentation and these positive presentations or is more uh, a negative perception in the this uh, two way debate so it was difficult to to code uh, because at the moment Boris Navarkov who is against Roma that is for yeah. sure but at, the, uh, at one moment he said, okay, I have some Roma co-workers, and they are good people. So it was difficult to, to um, code as one comment as negative or positive. So that was, but the perception that I have at least, and I am involved in this uh, Roma issue, is that actually the negative uh, prevails. And uh, the the ones who who were against Roma were actually uh, very vivid in in uh, uh, having this one. We are the discriminating majority because we pay taxes. They do not pay taxes. They do not pay the electricity. They are filthy. They are poor, and so on and so forth. So this was the idea. But at the same time, we have some. Uh, and it was interesting that some Roma, at least uh, in Romania. Natalia and uh, Ionut Vishan, they are they are from they belong to the Roma community. And in the end, I, as I said, they said I am a Roma and I do not behave like this. I went to school and so on and so forth. Uh, but the negative other presentation is very uh, salient for EU institutions. Whether for the Roma community, okay, we have some Romas defending their way of being in the society, but for the uh, member states, governments, and EU organizations, we have a total negative other presentation. Because they, they go with the solidarity and the failure and the, that uh, governments actually, or NGOs, Roma NGOs, stealing the funds and they do not give money to people. And this, this actually, yes, was prevalent with negative presentation for EU organizations. Other questions? Um, otherwise, I would ask. Um, so you were talking about the um, uh, that's a bottom-up uh, legitimation, mm -hmm. and at the same time, institutional. <coughs> um, no, no, no. I took the definition that yeah. I said. It is not institutional. Top down. So the top down in this de debate yeah. in Europe platform goes, as I said, they take some comments from the, the EU citizens and they address these questions to, uh, to a member of the parliament. And this was the top down in a way, but here it stops. Mm. Because in all the comments, at least that member of the parliament from Bulgaria did not interfere. But at the same time, the comments did not actually attack his idea that traditions are not good. Because maybe it is a technical problem there. Uh, the member of the parliament are registered and we have a video and maybe people do not just push the button and hear the, his words. It is, maybe it is a problem, this one. Because it was interesting to see that none of the commentators actually commented or, or, or replied to his uh, ideas. Mm. This was the top down. In the, the platform actually is this way, but they also want to have the bottom up to see the people's uh, EU citizens' opinions on the on an issue, because there are a lot of issues there. And yes. You see the deficit of communication because the EU organizations do not uh, share this negative uh, perception. On the contrary, they say the, the question of Roma people must be included in the debates. There is a strategy at the level of the union union but also national strategies for Roma people integration. So the discourse is uh, contrary to the perception uh, shared by... Uh, but at the same time, we may say that they are very transparent because the, the comments on uh, EU organizations' failure, failure were not uh, deleted or something like this. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was would have been interested in, in the um, interactions, whether they 
how much with it because you mentioned there's moderation, but um, um, they did so, not interfere. So, so there was no ah, like signs yeah, of sorry, like. Sorry, um, sorry. They interfered in two cases where the messages were deleted because there were uh, I don't know swearing the other and so on, and they were words that were not appropriate for debate. Mm -hmm. This is their way of interfering. Okay. But in commenting, in having interaction yeah. with them, no, maybe one of them behind these names is the moderator. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Because that would be interesting to see the nationality of the, the, the commenters. But, uh, for example, we have one saying that he's uh, AHT. And the AHT doesn't have, you do, do not have the nationality there. Or maybe they are lying about their nationality. We have to not know. Yeah, yeah, so thank you very much. I'm afraid we have to move on to our next presentation.